It's a strange feeling. Going back to work on something you painted so long ago. Something that first linked your life to Fisk. Thirty-five years ago. Mm. Time and weather have been hard on these murals. And a lot has happened since. To me, to the world, to Fisk. If I was starting out now to paint the story of the Negro people and Fisk's place in that story, there are things I would change and so many things I would add. Fisk today, the South today, the world today are not what they were then. And I've changed. No artist stands still. It's almost frustrating, this feeling of, if I could only start over. But I'm not going to start over. That's a job for a younger man of a new generation. I'm just going to restore the murals, make them as they were when I first created them. Anyhow, what has happened since at Fisk? and in the world is reflected everywhere you go on the campus. First thing I learned when I came here, that Fisk was born of a miracle. The miracle of freedom overnight for four million slaves. The friends of the freedmen knew what the ex-slaves quickly discovered, that freedom is not enough. Emancipation had struck the chains from their bodies, but only education could unshackle their minds. Freedom was a beginning, a very rough beginning from a seed planted a century ago in dusty soil, the old Fisk Charter. The purposes of the corporation are the education and training of young men and women irrespective of color. Remember what you thought of when you first read it? way back in the 30s. Charter, you're way ahead of your time. When I joined the faculty, it was quite an experience to find that I had almost as many Negro colleagues as white ones. It didn't take long for it to seem quite natural. The student body was, and still is, predominantly Negro. 
but there's a broadening out here too. It began with what was then an unheard of exchange. It was a daring experiment 15 years ago, sending students for a semester study in predominantly white colleges in the North and West, and in exchange, receiving students from those colleges at Fisk. pinpoint any one reason for coming here, except perhaps that I've always been a rather independent type. By the time I was ready for college, I had spent much time in the South and had become attached to the region. I suppose the main reason was I could see tremendous soda occurring around me, and I wanted to be a part of that. Just watching from the sidelines wasn't enough. I knew I would be misunderstood by many of my southern friends, and it really hurt. But, well, this me to be the most relevant place to be at the time. And I'd been told I would be accepted there without prejudice. So, here I am, and I'm enjoying it. What is Africa to me? <laughs> County Cullen asked that question in one of his early poems in the 1920s. so very long ago, most American Negroes regarded Africa with indifference or rejection. Too primitive, too different. <laughs> most of it had been cut up into European colonies anyway. No one dreamed then that the map of Africa in a scant quarter of a century would change so drastically. But not long after I came here to teach, Fisk, its sense of future joining with its sense of the past, set up a program of African studies, one of the first in the nation, which helped to focus interest on that explosive continent and its newly emerging nations. Fisk was an exciting place for anyone with an interest in Africa. It still is art and artifacts from Africa and about Africa are everywhere on the kiss.
I still get a kick out of seeing so many foreign students at Fisk year after year. When I first came here to teach, foreign students were rare on most American campuses, but they were here almost from the beginning. The tours of the Jubilee Singers had made Fisk better known abroad than here at home for a while. student center was open. <laughs> I got a little high that evening, not on the soft drink served, but on the rich mixture of faces, costumes, cultures. If the world is getting smaller all the time, as they say, for me, the center reflects how much bigger our world has been getting here at Fisk makes me feel a little <laughs> smug. First, the African studies. Then, not long after, this center, one of the first in the country. And each seemed a natural thing for Fisk, this further broadening of horizons. liberal arts, the forbidden fruit to slavery throughout the ages, the poet, standing insecurely upon the thin edge of a whirling world, strains to catch the music of the planets, the philosopher, an isolated figure, and deep meditation upon the ultimate purpose of life. The scientist holds a torch which gradually lights up unknown worlds to man. As far back as the days of the Greeks and the Romans, the liberal arts were subjects only freemen could study. Since they gave a man breadth of knowledge, and the ability to think for himself. <laughs> Dangerous knowledge for slaves. To me, Fisk's true glory is that in spite of all the pressures and induce become, like so many other schools, a vocational institution for Negroes, Fisk stubbornly stuck to its liberal arts program. That's how Fisk went on to produce leaders for an almost leaderless people. moved when watching these youngsters digging into the great human inheritance so long and so painfully accumulated 
and so long withheld. Cortez with the eagle's eyes. He stared at the Pacific, and all his men looked at each other with a wild surmise. That was how the strange new world seemed to the educated man of the early 18th century. He still dreamed of new horizons filled with bright new climates Pursuit of excellence, that's a popular term today. At Fisk, it's always been the standard, from the beginning. It is our aim to establish a school equal to the best in the country. That's what has made it such a challenging experience to be at Fisk. The standard constantly in sync. When so many first Recognitions granted to predominantly Negro colleges, including the highest academic distinction. What do you do to get the best out of your superior students, the ones who can breeze through most of the regular courses, and so come out without having developed their potentialities? For Fisk, the answer flowed naturally from its own standards. Challenge them. You set up a stiff general honors program for them to make them work hard and, and think for themselves and see all the fields of knowledge as part of one great discipline. But nevertheless, when a writer with the literary gifts of James Baldwin proceeds... But don't you see? Only a complete ban on nuclear weapons can achieve a condition that... Will well, if you consider the recent attitudes of de Gaulle towards America, the United States policy towards France. In this way, they'll come to see that all knowledge has a bearing on life, can help shape their own life, can help shape the future. Hmm. Colloquium is a dictionary word at most places, but it rolls easily off the tongue here at Fisk. To the students in the honors program, it means Come, let us reason together. Each college year has a central theme, timely and timeless. I'd say they pick some pretty good ones. Sometimes field work on the good society, for example, leads into quite unacademic situations. a lot. And a lot of things have changed at Fisk to keep up with it. All those new buildings and the things that go on in some of them. When I drop in, I sometimes feel I'm in the temples of new gods, modern gods of science, who are also, we trust, our new servants. Theater, 
Dalle au théâtre ce soir. No, Frank. The verb form is je vais, not je l'ai. Lately, it's struck me how the world's orbit has been drawing closer and closer to the orbit of Fisk. The problems and possibilities that grow out of freedom for people of long submerged races and nations are things Fisk has been dealing with for a hundred years. And Fisk has kept right up to the minute with them. One of my art students is going to take a course next semester in social disorganization. Another student will be taking a course in the natural history of race relations. Another, the economics of underdeveloped countries or uh, the cultures of underdeveloped countries. I forget which. If there is one thing Fisk particularly understands, it's change. Fisk was born of change and carries the genes of change in its blood and bones and in its courses. Oh, Lord, I want two wings. Behind my face, I want two wings. <laughs> oh, nothing at Fisk has given me more delight through the years and the atmosphere of, of creativity that surrounds the students. Early in every freshman art class, I tell my students that art is a very personal use of the imagination, and sometimes they surprise me. When I asked him what he would call it, he said, I think mother and child. When I asked her what she would call it, she said, Hmm, well, let's see. I think mother and child. <laughs> if music be the food that feeds the souls of men,
atmosphere of creativity, fed from within and from without. From the great centers of the world, I've watched the currents flow through Fisk. These paintings have hung on loan from the Metropolitan Museum in a noted group of museums in the Louvre and London and Washington. From Fisk, they go on to other centers as other art and artists come to Fisk. From these 40 acres, for a century now, Fisk has been seeding the land with his sons and daughters, equipped to make their way and their contribution to the fast-changing modern